In mathematics, two different fields that might superficially seem like completely different mathematical fields often have very deep connections between them. And perhaps nowhere is there a better story about connections between different fields than in the relationship between Fourier series and linear algebra. Now, I've already introduced the basic idea of Fourier series. I have a little playlist on it. You can check out the link down in the description. But what we're going to do in this video is try to explore the connections between Fourier series and linear algebra concepts like bases, inner products, orthogonal projections, and so on. So where I want to begin is by thinking about these two different functions, sine of t and cosine of t, two different 2 pi periodic functions. Now, I can manipulate these in a way that's broadly analogous to what I do with vectors. For example, I could add these two different functions, or I could take scalar multiples of these functions, 2 sine of t plus 3 cos of t, a linear combination of sine and cosine. That is, I have a sort of addition property and a scalar multiplication property. Now, if I consider not all functions, but the following set of functions, piecewise smooth, 2 pi periodic functions on the real numbers, of which sine of t and cos of t are both examples. Now, these types of functions are the types of functions we talk about when we're talking about Fourier series. This is the conditions needed, for example, to guarantee the convergence of a Fourier series. Well, then I have the following property. That these types of functions are what we call closed under addition, as in if I add two functions that are 2 pi periodic, the resulting function is also 2 pi periodic, save if I multiply it by a scalar. By the way, the fact that this is 2 pi periodic doesn't really matter. It could be any value of t periodic. It just has to be the same value. So we're talking about all of the functions having the same period, in this case 2 pi. But this story is pretty much the same story as what we do with vectors in our n. So for example, if I imagine two vectors, in this case in R2, u and v, well, I have a way to add them. This is sort of a tip to tail addition in linear algebra, and that creates the vector u plus v. Likewise, I could start with a vector u and I could take a scalar multiple of it and get, say, for example, 2u. And so vector addition and scalar multiplication were the core operations of vectors in Rn, but likewise also totally work for 2 pi periodic piecewise smooth functions, which are the sort of types of functions we're going to consider when we talk about Fourier series. Let's say a few more things about this vector space Rn before we go back to the context of Fourier series. So the next thing I want to note and recall for us is that vector spaces like Rn have a basis, and in particular the basis for R3 of 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1, those are three vectors that form a basis. What a basis was, was a set of vectors that was linearly independent, that is, you couldn't write one as a linear combination of the others, but also it would span the entire space. What we meant by that is that if you took any value of x, any x inside of your Rn, you could write it in terms of your basis vectors. And in fact, the linear independence implies you can write it in terms of the basis vectors in only one way. So for example, if you had the vector 1, 2, 3, then this could be written as 1 times the first basis vector, 2 times the second basis vector, and 3 times the third basis vector. So what's the Fourier series analog of this concept? Okay, so now let's go back to the vector space of piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic functions on R, this set of functions that has sort of a, an analog of vector addition and an analog of scalar multiplication. So what's the analog of a basis here? Well, when we studied Fourier series, the big thing we learned about it was that we could express a function as a convergent Fourier series, a sum of cosine terms, sine terms, and a constant term out the front, and that this was possible when we had the condition of being a piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic function. And so what's going on here? Well, it's basically the same kind of idea, that is, the sine terms the cosine term and the constant term, those are all linearly independent. Indeed, you can't write sine of x in terms of, say, some combination, a linear combination of sine 2x and cos 2x and perhaps higher frequencies. It's just not possible. There's no trig identity for this. And so all these functions are linearly independent. 
But in addition, really what we're doing is we're saying that the sine and cosine terms are going to span the vector space. And what that just means is that any function that has those conditions can be written in terms of a linear combination of these sines and cosines. And so the big idea of Fourier series is that you can take any function in this particular class and write it as a linear combination of these basis vectors, the sine terms and the cos terms, they're gonna form a basis. Now, there is a little bit that I'm sweeping under the rug here. For example, these sums are infinite sums, which is not the same as the finite linear combinations we talked about before. There's issues to do with convergence, but the big idea, the analogy, definitely holds. Okay, but we get to go even deeper than that, because, well, if I think about Rn again, let's go back to Rn, there's something called an inner product or a dot product on Rn. And what this is, is if you take two different vectors, u and v, their dot product, aka their inner product, can be just written as u1, v1, plus all the way down to un, vn. So what is an inner product? An inner product is something that takes two vectors and spits out the scalar, it spits out a number in R. This is a vector space over the real number, so it gives you a real number. For example, a particularly important one is what is the inner product between two of the basis vectors, say 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, and the inner product there is gonna be 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. And you could check this for all the different ways that you can take the basis vectors. And what we get out of this is a concept of an orthonormal basis. An orthonormal basis means that any two basis vectors are orthogonal. They have a 90 degrees between them, or their dot product is equal to zero. And the dot product with themselves is just equal to one. The fact that they're orthogonal would be called an orthogonal basis. The fact that their lengths are all one or their dot products with themselves are all one makes it an orthonormal basis. And orthonormal bases are really, really nice bases in the field of linear algebra. They make a ton of our computations easy. Okay, so that's what happens in our end. Back to Fourier series now. We're again in the vector space of piecewise smooth two pi periodic functions on R. So the question is, is there an inner product here? Is there some object we've already studied in Fourier series that I could use as my analog? And indeed there is. The inner product that we're gonna use here is going to be one over pi, the integral from minus pi up to pi of the product of the functions of f of t, g of t, dt. Why is this an inner product? Well, it starts with two vectors. Here I'm thinking of a, a vector being a particular type of function, and it takes two vectors and it spits out a real number because a definite integral is going to be a real number. So it takes two vectors, spits out a real number. That's exactly the structure of an inner product, and indeed it would obey all the technical list of axioms needed to make it an inner product space in linear algebra. And it sort of makes sense that it's defined in this way. Uh, if you think about what an integral is, an integral is kind of like a continuous sum. The dot product on Rn was a sum of multiplying the same values of the components together, like u1, v1, plus u2, v2. So if you do the sort of continuous analog of that, and you're like f of the value x times g of the value x, it's more or less the same kind of idea. The 1 over pi out the front is sometimes present and sometimes not present, depends on exactly the presentation you're seeing. I'm going to keep it there as sort of a normalization condition. Now I want to return to another fact that we saw when we were developing our theory of Fourier series. And it was actually three different intervals. The integral of sine times sine with different frequencies, the integral of cosine times cosine with different frequencies m and n, and then the product of cosine and sine. And we got these values. We saw these integrals previously. If basically it was, if you took sines of different frequencies, or coses of different frequencies, then those integrals would be zero. And if they were the same frequency, like the integral of sine of 2t times sine of 2t again, the same thing, m equal to n, then it would integrate out to pi. I'm gonna slightly change how I presented it before. Instead of equaling pi on the right-hand side, I'm gonna divide out and put one over pi everywhere to be consistent with my inner product notation, because that's what these integrals are. These integrals are now just inner products. So let's just rewrite them again that is the inner product way of stating the same fact. And really what this is doing is saying that those basis vectors, the 
constant term, the sine terms, and the cosine terms, that those basis vectors are really an orthogonal basis. That is, if you were to take the inner product of, say, cosine of 3t with sine of 4t, any combination like that, you're always going to get them being equal to zero. All of those inner products are zero unless you're taking the integral of sine of 3t with sine of 3t with itself, in which case it would add up to 1. There's one small caveat to this, which is that the inner product of 1 with itself actually adds up to 2, not 1. That's the only exception. And, and indeed, you saw sort of an a naught divided by 2 in our definition of Fourier series. This was sort of to try to adjust for that fact. It, it doesn't really matter. Now, we can say even more about this amazingly because we've already said a lot. So let's go back to Rn, where I've got my E1 and I've got my E2. They're orthonormal basis for Rn, and I've plotted them where they go right here. This is just 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now, if I take any other vector like x, how do I write x in that orthonormal basis? Well, we can do orthogonal projections. I can project that x down onto the x-axis or onto the y-axis. That is parallel to E1, parallel to E2. And the formulas for these projection formulas are, well, just inner products. That was our geometric meaning of the inner product. So the inner product of x with E1 is the component of x lying in the E1 direction. That's its geometric meaning. Likewise, along the vertical here, the inner product of the vector x with E2 that gives, well, the component of x in the e2 direction. And then the way we express x in terms of this basis, well, it's x is the proportion in the e1 direction times e1, so the first inner product times e1, then plus the second inner product or the proportion in the e2 direction times e2. So the big idea here when we see this in the context of linear algebra is that if you have an orthonormal basis, expressing a vector x in that orthonormal basis is really easy, and you just take all of these projections, that gives you your result. Okay, so what's the analogous statement with Fourier series? Well, remember, I have this big long expression, this f of t. This is basically saying I want to take this f and express it in terms of this basis, but what are the constants? What is the a0, the an, and the bn? How do I figure out those coefficients? Well, we had some formulas for those. We've studied how to come up with them, and, and the formulas we came up with were all these same basic kind of integral formulas, integrals from minus pi up to pi of the function f times either 1 or cosine of mt or sine of mt, basically the, the inner product. And these statements, these integrals, can just be rewritten in terms of inner products. They're just statements in terms of our new inner product. So a0 is the inner product of f with 1. A m is the inner product of f with cosine of mt, and b m is the inner product of f with sine of mt. And so we get the same thing. If you want to figure out the coefficients of your Fourier series, you are just projecting your vector, f of t, onto this orthonormal basis, and those projection formulas, these inner product formulas, they give you exactly the coefficients. Okay, so I'm going to step away, but I want to make clear exactly the analog that I'm drawing here. So the first thing is, I have two different vector spaces. The vector space Rn, where a vector in Rn looks like a normal old vector that you might sketch, a little thing with an arrow. But then in contrast, I have a different vector space, the vector space of piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic functions on R. Now, both of these vector spaces actually have further structure. They have the inner product structure that makes them an inner product space. A vector space together with an inner product makes an inner product space. For Rn, the inner product is just the dot product, u1, v1, all the way down to u and vn. But for the piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic functions on R, our second vector space, the inner product is just this particular integral formula, the integral of f of t times g of t, with a 1 over pi out the front. Then, both inner product spaces have an orthonormal basis. It's relatively easy to write down in the case of Rn, but for our piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic functions on R, we've used the components from our Fourier series, the sine of nt, the cos of the nt, and the constant 1. That is going to be the basis for our vector space. Then for both cases, we have a way to represent, to write a vector in terms of that orthonormal basis. In Rn, this is just coefficients times those basis vectors. 
It's basically the same idea, but that's the big formula of Fourier series. It's just coefficients multiplied by our orthogonal basis vectors, the coses and the sines. And then finally, you can figure out what those coefficients are. They are just projection formulas. So in the case of Rn, your ith component ai is just the projection of x down onto ei, aka the inner product of x and ei. But for the piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic functions on R, then all of our coefficients can be given by inner products in the same way the inner product of f with the different basis vectors, whether it's 1, cosine of mt, or sine of mt. And so what we've seen here is this beautiful parallel between linear algebra and Fourier series, this connection between these two very disparate ideas that truly are intimately connected. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and we'll do some more math in the next video.